Light and color and spectra are very important topics in chemistry, physics, astronomy, and other physical sciences. But spectroscopy can be really tough to teach. Classroom aids like handheld rainbow foil or plastic spectrometers are difficult to use and often leave students more frustrated than informed. RSpec Explorer is a real-time spectrometer for gas tubes and other classroom spectra. This video will show you how RSpec Explorer gives you the tool that you need to effectively teach spectroscopy. Here's the main RSpec Explorer screen. You can see here on the left that it has a live video feed. This is coming from the tripod mounted spectrometer. That's me waving on the left there now. And this column here is an inexpensive color LED array that you can buy at the same time you purchase RSpec Explorer. Let's turn it on. Running vertically on the array are the Roy G. Biv colors. There's red and orange and yellow and green and blue and indigo and violet. And over here are the same colors in the same order. This is the light diffracted through the grating in the spectrometer. The first thing we can do with our students is have them observe that as we cover the LED lights, the diffracted lights disappear too. We want our students to understand that the colors on the right are diffracted light and dependent on the LED lights on the left. Then we can have your students observe that the diffracted colors are all different distances from their source LED. This distance here from the purple LED to the diffracted purple is different than the distance from the red LED to its diffracted color. We can challenge our students to explain why these distances are different. Why is this purple diffracted light so much closer to its source LED than this red diffracted light is to its source LED? And you know what? We find that a surprisingly large number of students can't explain why the distances are different. How can that be? They've been studying light and color and rainbows since second grade, but they haven't really assimilated the topic. We want our students to really understand this core concept that different colors diffract at different angles. It's of course the same principle as this rainbow up here. You can see when I cover the white light, the rainbow disappears. Our students have seen that for years and years. And of course, Sir Isaac Newton would love this screen, wouldn't he? But here's the thing. When we pull the colors out standalone, one by one, from the familiar rainbow they've seen all their lives, many students are unable to transfer their knowledge of rainbows and diffraction to this new experience. So when we're teaching light and color and diffraction and spectra, before we start showing off all the fun stuff, the colorful gas tubes, the graphs, we want our students to actually understand the fundamentals of diffraction in a live environment. In fact, in the very same environment that they're going to see the gas tubes in in just a moment. Okay, now that we've laid this initial foundation, we can transition from qualitative to quantitative. These orange lines are a sampling region. I'm going to drag the box around this purple light to sample just that region. Notice on the right, we now have an intensity graph of just that region. This peak here is an intensity peak from the LED itself. The more bright the LED lamp is, the higher this peak will be. And this peak here is from the diffracted light, this light. The key concept for our students to understand here is that this distance here literally is the same distance as this distance on the left, scaled so that we can now measure quantitatively on the right wavelengths. Our students need to understand where the graph comes from. Now don't worry, in just a minute we're going to get into some more advanced examples, but this is an important concept for our students to grasp before we move on. Okay, now let's examine the spectrum of this red LED. I'll move the orange capture box. Now when I release my mouse button, the purple peak on the graph jumps to the right, there, like that. The red peak is more to the right because the red source light is more to the right. And once again, this distance here is that distance scaled. Okay, so once our students understand how the diffraction is working on the left and how the graph is produced, it's time to have fun with the gas tubes. That's really what we wanted to do, right? So let's get rid of the colorful LED array and turn on our gas tube. 
Aha, there's a beautiful gas tube spectrum that's so captivating to students. So looking at this graph, we can observe with the students that this yellow peak here is that yellow peak there, and that this greenish doublet here is over here, and so forth with the purple lines and the others. This helps, again, the student understand the relationship between the qualitative data on the left and the quantitative scientific representation on the right. At this point, some educators will have their students each use some sort of inexpensive handheld spectrometer to try and see this colorful spectrum on their own. But unfortunately, students often have trouble seeing the spectrum in a handheld device. It's not always easy. <laughs> in fact, we were at a conference recently and a teacher said to us, where were you last month? I spent 20 or 25 minutes of my class just trying to get everybody to see what you're showing here in just a few seconds. With our Spec Explorer projected on your classroom screen like we're seeing here, everyone sees the same thing at the same time. There's no dependence on finicky and hard to use handheld spectrometers. And best of all, spectroscopy is no longer a private viewing experience. You and your students share the same view and can even take measurements together directly from the screen. So let's see if we can identify the gas in this gas tube. I'm going to remove the color fill on the graph by removing this check mark here to make things easier to see. And then I'm going to come up to this button and click on it to display this elements window. This is a collection of reference spectra for many different elements. So for example, if we put a check mark next to hydrogen bomber here, over on the graph, we can see those blue lines showing us a template for where the hydrogen bomber peaks should be. But I don't see any lineup. For example, this hydrogen alpha line in blue here doesn't have a peak in our red data. So let's turn that off and turn on the helium template. Wow, look over here. These blue helium template lines go right through our data peaks. We've now identified this as a helium gas tube. We're no longer doing pretty colors. Now we're doing science. Whether this is a spectrum from a gas tube or from a distant galaxy or anything in between, we can use the exact same procedure to identify what we're seeing. Okay, so now we're going to swap out this helium gas tube and replace it with a hydrogen gas tube. Okay, there we go. Now maybe you notice that the peaks in this red curve from the hydrogen gas tube are in different places than those that we saw a moment ago on the helium tube. And that's because, of course, each element has its own spectral fingerprint. That's a key concept we want our students to understand, and by swapping gas tubes we can easily demonstrate that. Now what I'm going to show you next is really exciting. I'm going to put a check mark next to this hydrogen bomber series. This window pops up. Now, this is an image many of you will recognize as the energy diagram of the bomber series transitions. And here's the amazing thing. In a moment, when I click on each of these colorful transitions, RSpec Explorer will display the wavelength equivalent of that transition energy on the graph itself. Okay, I'll start with this red line. When I click on it, over here, there's a transition, and notice it goes through a peak in our data. Now let's go on to green. There it goes through a peak in our data, and the same thing with the blue and the purple. So we've just made a connection for your students between the theoretical transition diagram and the hydrogen gas tube that they're looking at in the lab. This is a fantastic connection to make for them. So one final thing on gas tubes. I'm going to close this window and I'm going to come down here and add some color back in. And now I'm going to drag an image of a laminated poster that you can buy. It's only available as a poster, not an image file like this. So imagine that this is a poster hanging on your classroom wall. When we zoom in on this periodic table, we can clearly see the hydrogen bomber series and that each element has its own unique spectrum. In fact, I'm going to resize it and reorient it here so that we can see the lines in our graph line up with the lines on this periodic table. So we're again making the connection between the periodic table and the gas tube that we're studying. Our Spec Explorer can also be used in hands-on labs. Student teams like this one might use our Spec Explorer to identify a mystery gas tube like we did earlier. In fact, we're going to finish up this video with two quick examples of labs. One is for flame spectroscopy and the other is for color studies. 
We have an external slit here that comes with the system. You just set it up right on your lab bench and slide it together like this. Now behind it we have just any old lamp illuminating it. Now we have here a lemon from the kitchen. We're just going to hold it behind the slit here and over on the right we can see that as expected the peak is in the yellow range because this is a yellow object. There's all sorts of color studies that you can do with a system like this to help your students understand light and color. But let's look at another example. Instead of the lemon, we're going to turn off our backlight. And here on my cell phone, I'm going to display a screen that's all yellow. I'm using a color design program on my cell phone, but you could as easily just take a picture of a yellow piece of paper or a lemon. When I hold the cell phone behind the slit, we can see even visually in the video display, there's a lot of green and there's a lot of red, but there's no yellow in the spectrum. Same thing quantitatively over on the right. We can see a green peak and we see a red peak. What's going on here? Well, of course, computer screens, whether they're cell phones or monitors, can't generate a pure yellow color. They have red, green, and blue, RGB emitters, and they generate some red, and some green and our eyes combine those and seize them as yellow. This is a great exercise and can even be used in student labs. In fact, the same technique can be used to study the gas flames of different materials doing flame spectroscopy. On the left here is a Bunsen burner. You can see the blue flame. Now remember, of course, that open flames can be dangerous. Be sure to adhere to standard safety practices. As we hold a sample of common table salt, sodium chloride, in the flame, we can see the emission spectrum here. And on the intensity profile graph, we can clearly see the emission line of the sodium doublet. Flame spectroscopy isn't quite as easy as gas tube spectroscopy, but as you can see here, it can be used to reveal the composition of a variety of materials. So that's a quick overview of RSpec Explorer. Whether you're using it for student labs or for classroom demos, we hope you can see that it will really enhance your students' understanding of the field of spectroscopy.